There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with uh, one of my most popular guests ever on my channel, Cecilia from Singapore. She has visited Tokyo a couple times over the last few years, and we've done some uh, bookish chats and book discussions face to face. And unfortunately, given the state of affairs in the world today, it's not possible to do it now. But here she is via Zoom. Ha Welcome back, Cecilia. Hey, Sean. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Surviving. Surviving. How are things in Singapore? It's good. I mean, I mean, to me, it's not a lot of difference. I'm a homey person. I always stay at home, even there's no COVID. But uh, with COVID, everything's literally 100% at home. I work from home. Work from home. I never step out. Yeah. And even for food, we just get the delivery or uh, yeah, just uh, make a simple food myself. Simple meal, yeah. And is your husband at home too? Yes. And He's working you. from home as well. So we are both 100% work from home. And, uh, and, and no divorce proceedings yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's good. It's me and Kenji too. Kenji's at home at the halftime and we're, we're doing fine. It's not easy, but it's it's been great actually for our relationship, bring us closer together. When are you expecting things to loosen up a bit? Uh, 2nd of June. They already uh, made the announcement. Okay. So and In phases or it will just be all things are free? Yeah, it will be in phases. Three phases, actually. The first phase is just like for essential businesses. Uh -huh. But but for gym, retails, and F&B businesses, that's probably on the second or third phase. Okay. And how about for your job? Are you an essential business? Yes, banking. Banking is. <laughs> In Singapore? Yourself? Probably. Oh, well, I'm teaching online now. All of my stuff has gone back online, and I have a feeling probably the state of emergency will be lifted next week. Uh, we're filming mm -hmm. this on May 23rd. Probably... Yeah. Possibly it will be lifted Monday, but if not then, probably in the beginning of June, just like you. Oh, okay. But a lot of my students are too nervous to go back to the physical classroom, so I, my online classes will continue, uh, maybe 80% of them for sure, and possibly 100% of them will continue on the internet for yeah. June, and, and we'll yeah. see go after that but uh, yeah I'm very much of a, a newbie online teacher I'm so modern now Cecilia I could barely stand it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I'm I'm nervous to go out even to ha to get a haircut mm -hmm. I mean hairdressers mm -hmm. is already there they are they are open for business but there's no way you know I go to a hair salon and I have a haircut it's like a close contact with the hairdresser your yeah. husband doesn't cut your hair Mine cut mine, I, but I bought little clipper. I bought clippers. He's I mean, he's gonna have to do it again. It's getting too long. <laughs> so, how has this pandemic affected your reading life, if at all? Well, definitely, it affects you know my mood, and also I have a very short concentration span yes. as well. So I'm feeling very anxious. Uh, not about myself and my husband. We are in Singapore, so we are pretty okay. <laughs> but I'm very anxious about my family who are in Indonesia. You know, the situation over there is a mess is it? and it's not improving, you know, and the crime rate is higher now because there are a lot of the jobless people in Indonesia. Oh dear. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was uh, talking to a friend of mine who is also in a bookstagram, is uh, the tireless reader in Instagram. Uh, we read Elizabeth Taylor, uh, about a few weeks ago, A View of the Harbor. Uh huh. It is her favorite, Elizabeth Taylor. I mean, I'm okay with Elizabeth Taylor last year. I really enjoyed Taylor's writing. It's very subtle. Yeah, a lot of writing highlights about the character's feeling. And it is very enjoyable. But this year, Taylor doesn't work for me. Well, I'm very I don't know. So Elizabeth Taylor is hit and miss for me, and I bailed on that novel. Oh. 
But okay. I, I bailed on that novel mostly because I couldn't stand that. What was he a sea cap, a retired sea captain? Bertram. Bertram, the old man that kind of shows up in this small town and just <laughs> imposes himself on everybody and just uh, he just I couldn't stand him. I I had to bail. I had to bail. <laughs> the only Elizabeth Taylor I've loved is considered to be her masterpiece. It was written near the end of her life. And what is it called? Mrs. Pelfrey yeah. at the Claremont. I love that one so much. Oh, I, I haven't read that one. Oh, well, that's the one to me that that's a masterpiece. And I couldn't get along with the, the one you're mentioning. What's the title again? A View of the Harbor. A View of the Harbor. So I bailed. And then I read another one more recently. as a buddy read with Leah from Litzy. Oh, okay. And I didn't, I hated it. I finished it, but I hated it. So I'm not sure Elizabeth Taylor and I get along, but uh, Mrs. Palfrey at the Claremont is stunning. <laughs> okay, I'll check it out. But probably for next year, because this year mm, yeah. is not so Taylor. So you finished A View from the Harbor, and you thought maybe it was just kind of your pandemic-related mood that made you not so. enjoy it? Because well, of... Yeah, before a few of the harbor, I did a book club read with the NYRB book club on Litzy. Leah is in that too. Yeah. And we read A Game of Hide and Seek by Elizabeth Taylor. A Game of Hide and Seek is about a love story or a pair. And a few of the harbor has kind of an extramarital affair as well in it. And I'm not good with affair stories. Do you like... Madame Bovary? I read Madame Bovary so many decades ago. I think I read it when it was a new release, Cecilia. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a great novel at the time, a masterpiece of world literature, but uh, when I think of what it was about now, I have no desire to reread it. I share your, dis it's not distaste. For me, it's boredom with adultery stories. There must be some fabulous exceptions, but if I know that a book is about a love affair, like an uh, extramarital affair, I'm just bored going in. I'd have no desire to read it. It's like there's nothing interesting about it. It annoys me because it's whiny. It's always a longing and loving, you know, and Madame Bovary has everyone's crying in the book. She cried, the husband cried, the lover cried, where is it going to end? And then there's a, there's a really famous vomiting scene that I don't care to revisit. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> but I, I, there must be exceptions. Ethan Fromm by Edith Wharton. That was, I love that. No, I haven't read it. And that was kind of about adultery or the, the yearning for adultery, at least. A powerful short story by the Western Canadian writer, Sinclair Ross called The Painted mm -hmm. Door, which has the most gasp-worthy ending of any work of short fiction ever published. I think if you hunt for it, you can find a free version online, and that is adultery theme. So no, there are uh, exceptions. There's probably so many exceptions. I am famous on my channel. Matthew mm -hmm. of Mayberry Books, are you watching this? For making these generalized pronouncements about things like this and then my subscribers calling me to task. The one that I did recently was I said, because I hated, a, I actually read a Barbara Pym novel that I couldn't stand. Oh, which one? It was called An Academic Question, oh. and it was published posthumously. She didn't want it to be published. She knew it wasn't good enough to be published, but her literary executor published it, and I went, did a ranty review of it, during which I summarily pronounced it. If the writer dies and the book work is unpublished, and especially if the writer makes it known that they don't want it to be published, you shouldn't bloody well publish it. <laughs> well, Matthew, it. Matthew of the, who has a great channel, the Mayberry Book Club, did a response video where he gave so many exceptions that I just conceded. Yeah, I just kind of make these pronouncements that uh, come off the top of my head and probably should have stayed there. But uh, anyway, yes, the theme of adultery in literature is not a one that particularly interests me. Me neither. So what has interested you recently? What have you been reading that's been good? I have my NYRB Classics Reading Society. Is, yes, and uh, you have your NYRB obsession. I know. <laughs> I'm 
Yes, I'm, I am the international marketing staff for NYRB. You should be. It's <laughs> unfortunately, it's an unpaid position. I know. <laughs> well, okay, so I have NYRB Classics Reading Society in Singapore, and I also joined the NYRB Book Club on Litsy with Leah and Subash. Do you know Subash from Malaysia? Subashini? Of course I do. It's been so long though. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Fondly. She's uh, in the club too. And I don't and, think I've ever heard her name pronounced, so that's why I was going, huh? oh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. And there's one day I looked through my bookshelves and I have a lot of uh, big books and read. I wanted to read all of them, but it's not read yet. So I decided to create another book club. It's Chunkster Book Club. Chunkster Book Club. Yeah, thanks to the book club. So the first book that we are reading is this. I know you don't like it. No, I didn't like it, but my uh, view is a minority view. But yeah, I got bored of it. <laughs> quick. We are going to meet at the end of this month to discuss the book. Now, so um, wait a minute. Is this a physical in-person book club or a social media book club? It's in-person, but because of COVID, so we moved to Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had no choice. Earlier this month, I finished book one. Wow. And today I'm going to read book two. It's long weekend over here in Singapore. So I hope to finish this by this weekend. That's great. It's enjoyable. I like it. It's very funny. The adventures and all the delusional. You are right. It's just like your know, sitcoms combined together. I know now I understand the literary roots of slapstick. I mean, this, the comedic violence. I mentioned about my anxiety and this book really fits me. That's awesome. Whatever works. It's me nicely. Yeah, it's very enjoyable. But it requires a lot of work and a lot of patience. Good for you. And yeah. what about NYRB books recently? Anything noteworthy? One that you gave to me, Invisible Cloak. A Chinese novel. Yes, by mm -hmm. Gilfay. You loved it or liked it. Yes. And I, 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 thought it. It, I thought it was just silly. So, what did I miss, Cecilia? I think I can understand from the Chinese culture uh, point of view, the way mm -hmm. uh, he said about life and stuff, all those are philosophical stuff about life. I think it's a very interesting that the, you know, this uh, guy who is a destitute in Beijing, trying to do something about his life, trying to make money. He had a lot of efforts to that. I don't fancy the amplifiers part, you know, the talk about the amplifiers, it really bores me. But um, I think that the way it was written to highlight, you know, life in a modern era in China, I think it's brilliant. There must have been layers of it that just passed me right by, because to me it was just about guy installing sound systems in rich Chinese men's houses, and I couldn't get much more out of it than that. So. Good yeah, for you. Yeah. yeah, I obviously missed a lot of cultural nuance, so I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the book. <laughs> oh, pleasure. And anything else? I'm also reading this. Zola. Okay, I've never read Zola. Okay. His Excellency, oh. what is it? His Excellency Eugene Rougeon. This is part of the 20 books in the series. What? That's a, <laughs> that's a 20 novel series? Yes. By Zola? Yes. And are you reading them all? I plan to. This is, this, is number two. This is number two? Okay. I still have a long way to go, so wish well, me luck. You said you've got a long weekend ahead of you, so you should be able to finish. <laughs> yeah, but I like Zola. I give the first book five star. What's the title of the first one? The Fortune of the Rougon. Okay. Rougon. Great. And are you yeah. doing that with uh, as part of any group? Mm -hmm. It's uh, just by myself. With Zola, everything is just so clear. His good is extremely good, and his bad is extremely awful. There's nothing in between. And you, you don't have to pick clues in Zola's novels, where everything just is stated in the open, just highlighted. Black and white characters? Yes. Uh -huh. Not much nuance? Not much. It's just uh, telling the story and just delivering what he thinks about the society. This is going to be my three, five years project for me, Very if good. I'm lucky. Very good. Speaking of long series of literary novels, have you read Anthony 
Powell's, what is it called? Dance to the Music of Time. It's about a dozen novels, perhaps, written in the mid 20th century. Have you read it? No, I haven't. I was really intrigued to try it about 10 years ago, and then I heard a few people talk about it that didn't really care for it, and I kind of put it out of my mind. But now recently on BookTube, I've been hearing my friend Ange of Beyond the Pages loved it, so I, I'm still toying with the idea. If I live long enough, I will get to it. <laughs> so what kind of a reader are you? I don't remember if we've ever talked about this. Are you a one-book-at-a-time reader, or are you a, a book slut like me? I try to be a one book at a time because I'm very bad remembering plots and names, names especially. Wow. And yeah, I have to stick just uh, to focus on one book at a time. I think that works better for me. Uh, this time last week, I was reading 18 books concurrently. 18? 18. 18. Too much. I'm down to 16 now. <laughs> I'm trying to get it <laughs> under control. Still too much. Uh, don't you get confused? No, I don't get confused. I, just, I don't get confused. No? But, but the reason that I don't get confused is that I take the time to pick up the strings of each book, and if I need to page back and just kind of re uh, re immerse myself in the novel, and there's something about that process that imprints the novel more deeply. But 18 is way too much. My sweet spot for number of books is about a dozen, 10 or 12. So 18 mm. is excessive, and I, I'm having to dig myself out. Uh, starting in June, and I'm not sure that this video will get posted much before June, I will be one of many judges for the BookTube Prize, which was a, wow. a literary prize that was started last year, and I was a judge for the semi-final round, and I will be a judge for the semi-final round in June and July again this year. So I have to read six novels within two months, which is not going to be very difficult, but I'm trying to clear most, finish most of these books in the next week so that I can start June fresh because I have six new books to read. <laughs> and I'm so worried that one of them might be Duck's Newburyport. Have you read it? Oh, uh, no. I saw how thick it is. <laughs> yeah. I started it and I bailed after 100 pages. But I've oh, no. It. Yeah, I didn't like it. I've kept it in case I have to read it, but I'm hoping the gods will show some mercy and not make me yeah. have to finish that book. It's a Marmite book, not for everybody. It wasn't for me. Who knows? Maybe uh, if I try it a second time, I will love it. You never know. Any stinkers? Have you read anything that you bailed on? Or I can't, I don't think you're not much of a bailer, but have you read any bad books recently? You know, I want to hear all the trashy gossip too. <laughs> I, I mean, the only complaint that I have is about, you know, as I mentioned earlier, these are uh, the Taylor books. It, it's a pity. Probably if I read this book last year, I probably just love it, you know, because I love her writing, but no, not this year. These uh, COVID things is uh, really affecting the mood, the reading mood. Sure. I think probably yeah. I could explain my juggling 18 books right now that that's one of my coping mechanisms i'm just adding more kind trying to kind of distract myself from stuff in the early days in the first few weeks i couldn't read more than about 10 pages a day and i'm now back that most days i'm back to reading you know several yeah. hours a day and i'm back to normal but i think two things that i'm noticing i have a an addictive personality always have had an addictive compulsive personality always will mm -hmm. but how that's mm -hmm. showing up now and i think it's in large part due to the pandemic, is adding too many books to my current reading pile. And even more than that, buying books. I am out of control. Oh my God, what have you done? How many uh, books have you? Uh, <laughs> I've been buying a lot of eBooks because for a while, Amazon Japan was not delivering physical books or it was okay. kind of, everything kind of slowed down or stopped. And so that actually forced me to start special ordering from Kinokuniya here in Tokyo. And I'm happy to give them a, a big chunk of my disposable income instead of Amazon, because Amazon is terrible, but necessary for me living in mm. Japan. I can't get English books very easily any other way, but I did do a lot of special ordering from Kinokuniya and they actually mm -hmm. delivered some to my house, but they're slow. And that was kind of a short term thing where they were willing to do yeah. that for me. So I have three three piles that are, I can't show you how tall they are, three piles like this, yeah. physical books, plus 
about a week ago, I filmed a 60 minute ebook haul video of all the ebooks I bought. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, it's probably going to take me till the end of the year to get those videos made and posted. And buying a few little small bookshelves too, because good lord, Kenji yeah. is going to divorce me if I don't get this <laughs> library under control. Oh, have you read The Dutch House? No. By Anne Paget? Anne Paget. I have not. Did you? I did. I did last week. I loved it. Okay. But I have a disclaimer. I bought it from the library. I borrow, borrowed the ebook. So I was like scrolling, scrolling this library's collection on Libby. And I saw, hey, the Dutch House is available on the ebook. And beside it, the audiobook is also available. And I knew that Tom Hanks narrated That's for this. Right. Yeah. I borrowed the, both of them. So I'm reading the ebook and I was listening to Tom Hanks' narratives. It's awesome. It's like a totally brilliant experience for me. Just to interrupt for a second, I have long been a proponent of that, the audio text combo. To me, it's the deepest way to experience a book. I'm so happy to hear it work for you. Yes, I think that is the best way of reading. Sure. I like the story. I think I'm a little bit biased because I love Tom Hanks and I love his voice. And when he narrates things without all the emotions is totally spot on. It's just perfect. So I give it five stars. That may well be one of the books I have to read for the Book Two Prize. I don't it depends. That right now they're doing the semifinal quarterfinal round. So the results of that will be announced by the end of next by the end of May. And if uh, that novel what's it called again? The yeah. Roundhouse? No. The Dutch House. The Dutch House makes it I, that may be in my group, so Get the audiobooks as well. Yes, I might have to do that. I think I have the audiobook available to me on script. The only Anne Paget I've read is Bel Canto. Have you I read haven't it? read that. Again, a bit of a Marmite book. I quite enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I, I was really enjoying it. And then she added an epilogue that pretty much ruined my entire taste for the novel. It went from a five star to a three star in the last four pages. Oh. And then the more I think about the actual novel, I'm not so sure how I would think about it. I read it about four or five years ago. A lot of people think it's a great novel, and I thought it was a pretty good novel until the very end. Mm. That's all I've read by her. Any other audiobook experiences you would recommend? Well, I borrowed Becoming by Michelle Obama. Uh, yes. Now that is pandemic listening. That is good for the soul. Did you listen to it during the <laughs> pandemic? I started about a few days ago, oh. but at one time speed, it's just too slow. Oh, really? Too okay. Uh, now, I'm a, one of the um, old school audiobook consumers in that I think it's sacrilegious to play around with the speed. I would never do that, but I, a lot of people do. If a book is boring and I want to finish it, I might do that. Or if I'm not connecting uh, with the audio narrator's voice, but for me, I did the audio book about a year ago. Having Michelle Obama in my ear for about, I don't know how long it took me, a month, was just the best political therapy, social political therapy. Uh, <laughs> I, I love Michelle Obama. She's just yeah. the goddess. And, uh, yeah. uh, I thought the memoir, it was a bit too long. And I thought that... She, the, especially the chapters about her university life. I found myself, my, yeah. my attention wandering, but no, Michelle Obama is the goddess. My mom had bought a ticket to go to her lecture in Canada. And uh, oh. yeah, and then that got canceled because of... Uh, the audio is too slow for me at one time speech. And I put it like uh, at the highest speed, but it's, it's just weird to me. And I decided, okay, I'm not going to listen to the audio. I'm going to give it a break and I'll just read the book. So maybe after this Don Quixote. Okay, so very, we had a completely different experience of that. That's so interesting. So uh, anything, uh, what's coming up on your NYRB list? This is from my uh, Singapore book club, The Post Office Girl. Stefan Zweig. It's his most famous, I think. Yes, yeah, so I read the first book by Stefan Zweig, The Chess Story with and why people club on Litzy and I loved it. It's very I thin saw book. some of your posts about it, yeah. It's very thin book but it's amazing. So so that's my first. We are going to read this uh, with uh, my Singapore book club. 
this month, it's my turn to pick three books for the nomination for the NYRB Book Club on Litzy. And it decided on this. Have you read this? No, I've never even heard of it. Darcy O'Brien, A Way of Life Like Any Other. Irish? American, I think. I think Irish-American. Okay. It's a man, right? Darcy O'Brien, that's a man's name. Yeah, it's an interesting pick. So it is at 2 NYRB. Born in 1939 in Los Angeles. Died yep. very young at the age of 58 in 1998. Never heard of him. So have, you haven't started it yet? No, I haven't started. Uh, Kenji, come and say hello to to uh, Cecilia. Just for a minute. He says his hair is messy. <laughs> hello. Hi, Kenji. Oh, Genki. <laughs> Genki days. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you oh, doing? Okay. Your hair is not messy. <laughs> messy, messy, messy. <laughs> Just making some lunch here. Yeah. Oh, Have cool. Enjoy. <laughs> Have I enjoy. Yeah. Um, and sorry, is that short stories or what is it? No. Novel? Novel. It's just, yeah, it's novel. Okay, well, I'll be very curious about that. One that's been, everybody's talking about on Twitter, but is not yet available to me in J Japan, or no, maybe now, Book Depository shut down for about a month, and now they're back up, so I can order from Book Depository through Amazon mm -hmm. Japan. I mean, it's all one company, right? But yeah. their listings disappeared from Amazon Japan for about a month, and they're back. But let me see if I can find the title, see if you know anything about it. Malacra by Henri oh. Bosco. I think it's, uh, what is it, um, Swiss? No, French. Uh, is that one on your radar? For next year. I wasn't able to get it here in Tokyo very easily, but I haven't checked recently. Everybody's oh. talking about that one on Twitter as being really good. And you and I had discussed a possible buddy read. Oh, yes, I remember. Three Summers I'm by Margarita Liberaki, translated from the Greek by Sarah Van Dyck. So, you want to do this for July? Uh, I'm not sure about July, but let me think about it. Maybe. It's not that long. We are going to read that though with uh, my book club here in Singapore, but we can definitely discuss this. Uh, the other thing that I got to double check is I had also kind of discussed doing a buddy read with my Greek friend, Electra. Would be really be interesting to get her perspective. So maybe uh, whether it's a buddy read or not, maybe the three of us can have a chat about it after we've all read it. Yeah. I, I can't quite commit to July, but maybe it's, maybe I can. So I'll think about that. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. See you.